Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Design Makeover, a show where you can watch Canva experts improve designs submitted by the community and learn a few design tips and tricks along the way. My name is Leah, and I'm from Canva Design School. All our past episodes are also posted to YouTube. So if you are watching the replay on YouTube, simply head to the link in the description of the video to watch all the previous episodes. Well, I think it's about time that I introduce to you today our amazing graphic designer, Karina. So I'll hand it over to her. Hi, everyone. My name is Karina and I'm a graphic designer here at Canva. I've been designing for Canva for almost about eight months now and have enjoyed every second of it. I initially fell in love with design when I was a little kid and I distinctly remember rather than looking at an actual product itself, I would always be looking at and admiring its packaging instead. I was also always incredibly invested in scrapbooking and would collect just a bunch of photos and little craft pieces and just create lots of collages. And I just already know that if I had access to Canva back then, many, many years ago, I would have absolutely loved it. Okay, so today I'll be making over three designs submitted by our Canva community, the Design Circle. First off, thank you to everyone for sharing your designs. I'm super excited to show you how easy it is to use Canva to create your designs. So some of the design principles that we'll be focusing on today are hierarchy, alignment, and color. The first design comes from Lynette and is an art poster revolved around women in tech. Design two comes from Alsauna and is an ad for a web development service. And our last but not least, this design comes from Aileen and is a school poster outlining steps in case of an emergency. Also, if you'd like to attend our future design makeovers live and get a chance to ask questions to our design experts, you can sign up to any of our live events via Design School events. Okay, so these are just some of the design principles that we'll be focusing on today. So hierarchy, alignment, and color. These principles are essentially the framework that allows us to make design decisions and successfully arrange elements within a design. Hierarchy is essentially what helps guide the eyes of the viewer as they look at your composition. So it defines what's most important and the order of which we should be reading or seeing things in order for it to make sense. Alignment is when elements in a design are lined up. It helps give more order and can create a visual connection between images, shapes, or texts. And lastly, we have color. So depending on the colors you might use in your composition, it could shift the entire tone of the design. And it also has the power to help convey or highlight a certain message within your design. So moving on to our very first design, as I said, design one comes from Lynette and is an art poster revolved around women in tech. What I like about this design is how she has creatively incorporated a whole scene in the background of the poster with all the little details from the tiny humans to the trees. I also like how Lynette has included illustrations of women working in STEM to help show the topic of the poster. One more thing I like about what has been done in this poster is how Lynette has effectively used layering to create more dimension within the design. So to start off with, I think we can simplify this design a bit and also give a clearer idea on what this poster is actually about. So I'm going to show you how to do that by adding some text and creating a simpler background. So without further ado, let's get into the editor. Okay, so this is our first design by Lynette. As you can see, there's quite a bit going on here. So I might actually start off by creating a duplicate page. So if you right click onto your page here and you'll see there's an option to duplicate your page. This is a good tip to take on if you have your design but you don't wanna lose it. So you can just make your edits onto here and you can always refer back to your old design. So I'm just gonna start off by removing all the elements we don't really need. Since I'm gonna be simplifying this by quite a lot, I'm actually just gonna keep the earth in the background and maybe these girls here. And we can always bring these elements back in later. So I'm just gonna highlight everything and then just deselect the elements that we need. So I'm just gonna deselect these characters here 
and also the earth in the background. And I'm just gonna press delete. So this is what we're left with. And to start off with, just so we have more working space, I'm actually gonna make these characters a little bit smaller so I have more room to play with. And we can also just make them bigger later when we need to. So I'm gonna start off with the background actually. And because this is a poster revolved around women in tech, I'm gonna choose something a little bit more bright and maybe more feminine like pink. So if we go here and maybe choose something like this, just to keep it bright and simple. So we're just gonna have a plain background and I'm gonna take this earth and maybe make it a little bit smaller. And I'm just going to center align that to the page. As you can see, there's a line running down the middle of the page, and that's when you will know that it's aligned to the center. Okay, so looking at this, it looks like the earth is quite dark and dull in comparison to the background because it looks like there's sort of like a shadow on top of it, which isn't really what we want. So I'm also going to change the color of the earth a little bit and make it just a little bit brighter. So if you click onto the earth and click up to here, I'm gonna change the green. And if you click add a new color here, it'll, you'll be able to adjust the color a little bit. So I'm just gonna make it a little bit brighter, something like this. And also do the same with the blue. Maybe something like this. Okay, so the next thing we're going to work on is giving context to the poster. So I want to add some text to sort of let the viewers know what this poster is about and just give more information. So I'm going to click onto the text tab here and just add a heading. And because this poster is about women in tech and how she wants this to be the future, I'm just going to put in woman empowering woman. I'm gonna make that bigger. Maybe to start there. And I'm actually gonna change the font to something more rounded just to fit in with the round aesthetic of the earth and also the illustrations. So if you click into here, because I know I want something more rounded, I can actually search for a font either using these tabs here, which gives you different categories that you can choose from, or you can just type it into the search bar. So I'm gonna search rounded, and I think I wanna go with this font here called CS Gordon Rounded. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is actually make this wrap around the top of the earth, just so that it doesn't look like we're sort of layering layers on top of each other and more so that it sort of, sort of fits into the artwork and blends in. So it looks like one whole piece. So if you click on your text box and you can click onto the effects tab here, you'll see that you're presented with a bunch of different styles and effects that you can use onto your text. So you can choose whichever one you want but for this one, I'm going to actually change the shape. So I'm going to click the curve effect. And you can see that curves effect in a circle. And you can sort of just adjust this however much you want, depending on the curve, amount of curve you want. So I want to wrap this around the earth. So I kind of want to make it in line with that. Maybe a bit more. To about here and align that with the earth. So it looks like there might not be enough breathing like space around it on the edges. So I'm going to highlight that or and make it a little bit smaller just so it's not as crowded. So maybe about there. And also center align that 
again. So once you've done that, I also want to change the color of the text just to fit in with the aesthetic. So I'm going to click into the text color up here. And I think I want something maybe like a darker shade of the background here. So maybe something red like this. It looks good. And I'm actually going to copy and paste that so I can wrap it around the bottom as well because it's looking a little unbalanced and empty. So if you on a Mac, you can hit Command C to copy and Command B to paste. And you'll see it's still curving upwards. So to make it curve the other way, if you click back into effects, you can see that you can drag this all the way to the other side. So it will become minus, which will curve it the other way around. And because we did a positive 33 previously, we can do negative 33, which will give us the same amount of curve. So I'm just going to drag that down here and sort of align it with what's already there. Okay, so I feel like this might be still a little bit too big. So always remember that you can always make edits as you go and nothing is set in stone while you're working. So I'm just gonna decrease that size a bit just to give more space in the sides and the bottom because we know we're gonna have these girls standing here afterwards. So you can see that there's kind of like an empty space on each side. And I kind of want to fill that in just so it looks more filled and less empty. So if you go into your elements tab here, you might want to search for something related to the topic. So I'm going to search maybe for a light bulb. So I'm going to search STEM light bulb. And because I want something that's more playful and more graphic to suit what's already on the page, I'm actually going to click onto the graphics tab here. And you can see there's more options. So I'm just going to try and find one that suits the theme that we have going on. And I might choose this one down here. So I'm going to put this here and you can just resize that to however big you want and I'm going to make sure that aligns with the earth and I'm just going to copy and paste that again so that's command c and command b or you can also just click on the element and if you right click on you can click copy and then right click again to paste so I'm going to put that onto the other side and make sure it's aligned you'll know it's aligned when you see those sort of lines come up and it snaps to the position. Okay, so that's mostly done. And now I'm actually going to add some buildings back into this artwork, because as you saw in the previous design, they were sort of a main part of the design. So I'm just going to put this back in. If I search buildings into the element tab, you'll get a bunch of options here. And I think I'm going to use an animated graphic just to make it more fun. And you can sort of resize that to however you want. And just I'm going to place it onto these little islands here so it looks like it's popping up from these locations. So I'm also going to Copy and paste that again. And make them all different sizes. And just have them spread around. And I think I'm going to use another type of building as well, just to make it a bit different. Maybe this one, which is still in the same style, but a different sort of building. 
and also going to spread that around. Okay, so I think we're mostly done for this middle part of the design. Now I'm going to work on these women at the bottom here. So you can see in the original design that they were sort of placed going up towards the center and back down. For this design, because I want it to flow well with whatever's already on there, I kind of want it to wrap around the earth like this. So I want her to be standing about there and the next girl can be a little bit lower. I'm actually going to bring her to the front. And then I'm going to move her to the middle. Maybe make her a little bit bigger. Yeah, I'll make these two bigger as well. And I want this middle girl to be at the front. So I'm just going to right click and bring her towards the front. And And there's also space for one more girl. So I think I might add another one. So I'm just gonna search woman in STEM. And you get a whole bunch of options to pick from. I think I'm gonna pick this girl here and add her to the side. Maybe push her to the back. And I'm just going to make sure the spacing is even. Okay. As you can see, this girl here sort of stands out because her shirt is blue, whereas everyone, everything else on the um, poster is more warm and more sort of like reddish tones. So I'm actually going to change the color of her shirt to something more suited. So I might get this purple here and change her shirt color. Okay, so we're almost done here. I'm just going to add one more element to the design. I'm just going to add something to these corners here to fill up the empty space so it looks more balanced since this bottom part here is quite heavy. So I'm going to search maybe just science. And I'm looking for something more simple just to add in the background. So maybe this here. And I'm going to change that to a white so it's not as distracting. So I'm going to put that into the corner here. And also turn down the transparency just so it doesn't take away from the main part of the poster. So I'm going to put that down to maybe 50 and I'm going to copy and paste that again and put that onto the other side. And I think that's our final design. So if we look on over to our before and after. So what we've worked on is the hierarchy. And this was important in making sure the viewer knows what the poster is trying to convey. By adding text at the top of the design, it is the first thing we see before taking in the rest of the poster. The second thing we worked on was simplifying the poster and keeping only the necessary elements. So there's more white space and is easier to consume. And the last thing we worked on was color. So because this poster is aimed towards wanting to see a change in the future for women in tech, we've used brighter colors to help set the tone of the design into something more hopeful and encouraging. 
the warmer colors also add more of a feminine touch, which is in line with the topic. So our next design is a design that comes from our sauna and is an ad for a web development service. What I like about this design is that this design has kept to one color palette with all the text, which makes it look nice and cohesive. They've also included a call to action, which is always good to have in an ad. So because this is an ad, we have to think about how we can get the point across as fast as possible to anyone who comes across it. It needs to be clear and easy to read. So here we could probably focus on the hierarchy of the text and the spacing within the design. So it's easier to consume the content. All right, so let's get into the editor. For our second design here, I've actually duplicated the design and chosen the fonts I've wanted to use already just to save us some time. So for the main heading, I've chosen to use the font Baron, which is something more sharper and a bit more modern looking. And for this limited time text here, I've chosen to use Leek Spartan because it's more legible and easy to read. And also Code Pro in this smaller text down here. So to start off with, I'm actually gonna have just a white background and maybe just delete this square here. So in this button here, we can see it says starting at only $999. And this is within like a shape sort of, so it's sort of seen as like a call to action. I think typically with a call to action, it would be something like get a free quote here. So I think I'm just gonna get rid of this for now and have this as our call to action on our design. And with this graphic, I really like the style of it and the color, but I also feel like it might not suit with the blue theme we have going on because it is a lot brighter and warmer. So I think I'm gonna delete this and maybe find something that's a little bit more relevant and suits our style. Okay, so now that we have all of this, I'm going to just position the logo first and make it a little bit smaller and just have it in the corner over here. Because we want the heading to be the first thing that people see as they scroll past an ad, we kind of want this to be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to firstly left align this and maybe make it mm, size. Let's see how this goes. So if you drag this, you can see that a little pink square pops up and that'll show you the margins of the design. So to make sure everything sort of looks cleaner, you can align these to the margins and everything will be in line with each other. So I'm actually gonna drag this to the end of the other margin. And then I'm going to, if you click on the text here and there's a spacing tab up here, I'm going to decrease the line spacing a little bit just so you can read the heading a little easier. And it sort of reads as one whole element rather than two separate sentences. So I'm gonna move that down to maybe 1.1, five and put it sort of not inside the middle but a little bit above and I'm actually going to work on finding an element first just so we can fill in this spot here so if you click into elements and I might search for just web development, see what pops up. And I'm also gonna click into graphics. So I think I'm just gonna go with this design here because it already has the blue theme going on with 
sort of some accent colors that we could potentially use in our design. So I'm gonna resize this and maybe crop it off to the corner a little bit, just so it looks like it's flowing into the, the design. And having all of this, I can sort of see that this is a little more bright and playful compared to the color of the fonts we have now. So I'm actually going to click on our title and onto the text color. And if you click on to add a new color here, you get an option to use an eyedropper tool. So if you click onto that, you can grab any color you want from your design. So I'm actually gonna choose one from this graphic here, maybe this darker blue, just so it sort of blends in more. And I might also do the same with this logo text here. So just grab this blue. Okay, so now I'm gonna work on this limited time text. I'm gonna make it smaller and maybe place it in the corner here, sort of like a sticker. So I'm going to go back to my elements tab and find the shape that I can put it in. So maybe this wavy circle here. And I'm gonna decrease the sides a little bit and place it in the corner. So because this is a sticker that you sort of want to stand out and people to look at when they first see it, I'm going to change the color using the eyedropper tool again. And I might grab this yellow color because it contrasts nicely with the blue and sort of stands out more. Okay, so I want this text to fit inside that sticker. So I'm actually gonna decrease the size a little bit to maybe 24. And also decrease the line spacing to about there. I might actually make this white just so it pops out a little bit more on top of the yellow. That looks good. And I might actually just rotate that a little bit. So next thing we're going to work on is the call to action, which is this text here. And I'm going to actually put a button underneath the heading because typically when you're reading a ad, you read the first heading and then you see whatever's directly underneath, which is the call to action. And it'll invite people to take action of whatever you're telling them to do. So in this case, it's to get a free quote. So I'm going to find another shape I can put the text into. So maybe this rounded rectangle here. And I'm just going to decrease the sides a little bit and make sure to align it with the margins. And you can see that there's little handles here on the sides. So if you pull those, you can sort of adjust the size to whatever you want. So I might put that to there and Make it a little bit thinner. There. And I'm also going to change the color of this button. So going back into here, if you click add a new color, I'm also going to use the eyedropper tool again and choose another color from this element here. So I might actually pick this lighter shade of blue and then I'll have the text on top. Maybe just a little bit smaller so you can fit within the shape. And I'm just gonna center align that maybe a little bit bigger. And 
And because this text is already blue and the shape of the, the button itself is also blue, you can't really read it. So I'm going to change the color of this text to white again, it's just so you can pop out a little bit. Now you can see it's a lot more legible. Next, I'm also going to work on these links here. So typically, whenever you have these contact information or links, there's normally sort of like an icon next to it, which shows what it is. So because this is a website, there might be like a little icon showing like the web. And then this is an email. So there might be a little mail icon. It just makes it easier for people to understand. So I'm first going to actually make sure these are the same size. So maybe 80. And once again, left aligning the text just to make sure everything's consistent within the design. And I'm going to line those up. And you can see this is a different color. I'm going to change that to be the same color as our heading here. So I believe it was this blue here. And I might actually just change that to www. Okay. So now I'm going to look for the icons that we can use. So going back into the elements tab, I'm going to search for maybe just website. And clicking into graphics here, I might go for this one here. And I'm going to change that to be the same color. So it's sort of seen as one element. So changing that to the dark blue we use. I'm just resizing that just so it fits in line with the text. And next we have our email. So if we just search email here. I'm going to grab this little envelope here. Also resize that and make that the same color. And give some space between each element. Okay. So I'm going to make sure that sits within the borders. And next we have this little icon here. So you can sort of tell that it is a circle, but because the top half of the circle is white, it blends in with the background. So to make sure that's fully visible, I'm actually going to add sort of a makeshift border around it. So if I go into back into the elements and under the lines and shapes here, you can see there's a circle. So I'm going to click into that and I'm actually going to send this to the back just so we can see sort of what we're working with. And you can sort of adjust depending on how thick you want the border to be. So I think that's good. And you can see that you can now see the full circle. And I'm just going to change that to the same dark blue. And if you select both elements and you can click up here to group the elements and it will just sort of join them together and you can move them around as one rather than having two separate elements and possibly moving one but not the other. So I'm just going to select that and resize and maybe put it down here. Okay, so we're almost done with our design but I feel maybe the background is a little bit plain and has a lot of empty space. So I might just add something in the background to just fill it up a little bit. So I'm going to search for a gradient. And going into the graphics tab once again, I 
sort of want something to blend in with the background. So you can see here, because it's quite a harsh line, it won't blend into what you already have. So I'm going to try and find one that sort of fades out. So I'm just gonna look for one that does that. Maybe this circle here. And I'm going to change the color once again to fit in with the theme of the design. So grabbing the eye dropper tool once again, and I'm gonna click over onto this light blue background of the graphic. So once you click, you can see it changes and I'm just gonna send that to the back by right clicking and you can send to the back or there's also an option up here where you can click position and it'll give you the options here as well. So I'm gonna send that to the back and I'm gonna move this to the corner up here and maybe rotate it a little bit just so the part that fades out fades into the middle of the design. So maybe about there and position it around here. So you can see that sort of gives a light sort of gradient but, and also adds some dimension to the background of the design. Well, but it's also not too distracting on the eyes and what's already on there and you want people to see. So that's our second design all done. So this is our before and our after. So let's recap quickly on what we've done here very quickly. So because ads are something that needs to be sort of eye-catching and easy to consume as people quickly scroll past. So a few things we did to help achieve this was to use some hierarchy to determine what information needs to be seen first. So in this case, it's the web development heading. So people know what this ad is for. We've also left aligned all the text so it looks cleaner and helps create different sections within the composition. And lastly, we've used a blue as the primary color theme with yellow as a contrasting accent color to draw attention. So moving on to our last submission. Design three comes from Aileen and it's a school poster giving instructions in case of an earthquake. I love how the illustrations used are very fitting as it is mostly kids at the school. So the images are more animated to fit in with other posters or signs they might have hanging up around the school or classrooms. They definitely help convey the message quite well. I also love how they've clearly sectioned off each step using shapes and colors, which is definitely a more clever approach. So the one thing I'd probably like to play around with is creating more space and changing the layout a little bit to make sure the order of the steps are clearer and easy to follow as it's not that obvious right now. So I think the only other thing I'd make some changes to are the colors used in the design as they are quite bold and can take away from the legibility of the message, particularly the background and the use of the gradient in the heading. So we're going to make it more toned down. So let's get into editing. You can see it's a bit more dark and looks a little bit intimidating. So I'm actually going to simplify this design a bit because you sort of want it to be as easy to read as possible, especially during a situation like this. So I'm going to duplicate the page and I'm going to just get rid of the elements that I'm that we don't really need right now. So we're going to keep this emblem and the text of the school name. But I might delete these two icons here and this shape. I'm also going to maybe remove this little crack design here and 
this disaster preparedness text and the gradient. Okay, so this is what we're gonna work with. I'm actually gonna change the backgrounds of the design a little bit, just so it's a little more brighter and easier to see. So we're just gonna choose a lighter shade of green. So if you click into our background color here and into this plus icon, you can change the color. So I'm going to change it to something lighter, maybe something like this. And I'm also going to change this text. So because we got rid of the text above, I'm actually going to change this to say during an earthquake. Uh, I'm going to ungroup this and maybe remove this background. So because this is the main topic of the poster, I'm actually going to make this a little bit bigger and maybe capitalize it. So if you click onto your text box and you can see up here in the editor, there's a sort of icon that has a lowercase a and an uppercase a. So if you click onto that, it'll actually change all your text to be uppercase or back to lowercase if you click it again. So I'm going to change that to all uppercase and position that in the middle. And I'm going to change the color of the text to something like a darker green. So maybe something like this. And I'm also going to change the font. So you have like, once you click into this font tab, you're presented with a bunch of some of the most popular fonts and then you, you can just choose any from there and the list is almost endless. So you have as many options as you want. So I'm actually going to change that to something more rounded and bold. So I'm going to choose this font here. And make sure that center aligns. And next I'm going to work on this school logo here. So I'm going to have this on top of the poster but maybe make it a little bit smaller just so it's not the main focus of the poster. And I'm also going to do the same thing to this text as I did to the heading here. And I'm gonna actually left align this text just so it looks a little cleaner. And change the font to the same font we used before, which was Antip Bold. And you can see that it's really bolded because it was already bolded before. So I'm just gonna click that to make sure it's the same and choose the same color. So I think it was this color here. Okay. So I'm just gonna make this a little bit smaller and put this at the top here. And move this up a bit. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is actually create the steps of the instructions. So because this is in, all these steps are in little squares that are sort of placed next to and over each other and there's not really any clear arrows showing which direction to read the instructions in. So I'm actually going to 
go into the elements tab and click onto this square here. And I'm going to resize that to make it a longer rectangle. And I'm going to have them stacked on top of each other just so it's clear that you read from top to bottom. So I'm actually going to make that white. And just align that to the center. And we know that we need seven boxes. So I'm just going to make this smaller a little bit so I have more space to work with. So I'm going to click onto the box and copy and paste this. So once again, Command C to copy and Command V to paste. And I'm just gonna put this down and continue doing that until I have seven rectangles. And then once you have that many, you can sort of just select three and copy and paste that just so it's faster. Okay, so you can see no, it's a little bit too big. So I'm just going to make that a little bit smaller just so we have some breathing space on the bottom as well. And I'm going to center align that. Now, if you're not sure if, they're, if these rectangles are evenly spaced, if you highlight them all and you can click into position here up top in the editor, if you click onto that, you actually get all these options. So you can change the arrangement or you can align these elements to top, uh, middle or bottom. And you also have the option to space evenly. So if we click tidy up, it will just automatically do that for you and sort of make sure that there's even space between each rectangle. I'm actually going to send that to the back just so I can see this here. Okay, so because we have all these rectangles, I'm going to get rid of all these squares. And move these little icons into each square. Now because the first step says to not panic, and this little animation of this child here looks like he's panicking. So you kind of want to choose something that the kids will follow. So I'm going to see if there might be a better option, but I also want it to be in the same style as these illustrations that we have here. So if you click onto this icon here, and you go up into the editor and you can see that there's a little eye icon with a circle around it and it says info. So if you click onto that, it'll give you information on the name of the graphic as well as who it's created by and just some keywords that are related to the image. But you can also see that down here, if you click on to see more like this, it'll present you with a bunch of options from the same creator, which will most likely be in the same style. So I'm going to try and see if there's one that we can choose from here, just something, a better option. So maybe this one right here, where you can sort of tell that he's a little bit scared, but he's staying calm. So I'm just gonna, Choose that graphic and get rid of the first one. And I'm going to place it into the first box. And just fit him into there. And then I'm just going to drag each graphic into their own individual box. And I'm just going to make sure that they're all in line. 
So with this one, I think we can just work with just the exit sign, which should be enough to communicate the message. And maybe I'll just have the building here. So it was a grouped element. So I clicked ungroup here just so I can separate the two elements and I can delete what I don't want. And I think I have an extra box. So I'm just gonna delete one. And once again, I'm gonna ungroup this element. So up here, and then it will separate all these little pictures. So I'm just gonna choose one to use. And put it there. Okay, so because I'm not using the rest of these images, I'm just gonna delete them. So moving on to the actual text of the instructions, this is all in the old font, which is Alleg Allegria Sans. So I'm gonna highlight them all and change them to the font that we used here, which was Antip Bold. So you can highlight them all and click to change the font. Or another handy tip is if you actually click onto one text box and you click up here and you click onto the font you want, which is Antep Fold. You can see down here that there's a little sort of rectangle tab that pops up, which allows you to change all the text in your old font to your new selected font. So if you click change all, you can see that they've all changed at once, which is a lot easier to do and saves a lot of time. So I'm actually going to highlight them all and make sure they're also the same color as the text up here. So I'm gonna highlight them and click onto the text color box up here and choose the color I want. Okay, so the first step was don't panic. And I'm going to left align that text just so it looks cleaner and also make it a little bit bigger, just so it's easy to read and they don't have to go up close to see it. So that's size 32. I'm gonna put that here. And then since we've sort of known the size, the size that we want, I'm going to select them all and do the same thing, just so it all applies at once. So we've highlighted them all and click into the font size and I'm going to click 32. Now look, might look a bit messy at first, but we will clean that up. So I'm going to left align the text and line it up with the left side of the text above, as well as the middle of the white rectangle. So you can see that there's those dotted lines that are popping up to let you know that. I'm gonna put that there. And I'm just gonna drag this out, left align, and align that again. So I'm just going to keep going with the rest of the instructions. So click alignment up here and also going to align that. So you can see that this text here is a little bit long. So I'm actually going to change the text just so it's as short as possible and easy to read. So I might change that to avoid buildings. So that can fit into the box. And 
and I'm going to left align that as well. And you can see this also doesn't fit. So I might just to go to assembly. And then the last one was to, so I'm just going to copy and paste this text. Drag this down and put get a kit. So that's all our steps done. I'm actually gonna just fix the spacing a little bit because you can see that there's a lot more space on the bottom compared to the top. So I'm going to highlight all of this and drag it down a little bit. Make sure it's center aligned and probably about there. Now you can tell that because these rectangles are stacked on top of each other, it's very easy to assume that we're reading from top to bottom. But just to make sure and make it as clear as possible, I'm also going to add a little arrow underneath each box pointing to the next one. So if we go into the elements tab on the side and click into lines and shapes, click C or and the triangle here, make it white and I'm just going to align that to underneath. And once again, I'm just gonna copy and paste this and do the same for each rectangle. It just makes it a little bit more clear and easy to read especially in a situation like this. Okay, so we're almost done. I'm just gonna add one more element to the backgrounds and corners of the design just to create some more balance and fill in the white space. So if you go into elements here and I might search up plants and I'm going to choose this one to fit in with the green theme we have going on and drag that into the corner. I'm actually going to put the transparency down a little bit just so it's not too distracting from the main point of the poster. So I'm gonna put that down to 40 and then I'm going to add the same thing to each corner. So just copy and paste that. And then if you want to flip the element, you can go up here into the editor and you can see a flip option. So if you click onto that, you get the option to either flip horizontally or vertically. So for this, I'm actually going to flip horizontally. So it fits into this corner here. Once we've done that, I'm going to do the same to the bottom. So I'm going to highlight these two and copy and paste. and also flip each element vertically this time. And put them into the corner here. Okay, so I think that's all finished for our third design. This is our before and our after. And let's recap quickly on what we've done here. So we've stuck to one color theme and turned down the colors to make it look less intimidating and more consistent. We've created a clear hierarchy and alignment to ensure that the order of the steps are clear. And we've chosen a clearer typeface for easy legibility. And so that's it for the makeover portion of the show. So we've got a bit of time for any questions, whether it's related to the designs we walked through, design in general, or anything you'd like to know about Canva. So please feel free to pop them into the chat box. First of all, I also just want to say a huge thank you to you, Karina, for coming on board for this session. There's been so much love in the chat. Everyone's really appreciating what you've done and what you've taught us all today. I've even learned a few things. <laughs> 
So we've already got a couple questions. The first one that comes from Sam, and he was wondering if you can give any tips on how to avoid over designing any projects that you design in Canva. Yep. So if you take a look at your design, so for example, here, you can see that it's sort of very like sort of clumped together and there's not a lot of breathing space. So it might be a little bit hard for the viewer to actually consume the information. So you want to make sure that there's actually enough white space and sort of padding around the edges just so you can sort of have more space for the viewer to take their time to look at the information and not feel overwhelmed by it as well. Well, I think that's great advice. Thank you. Our next question comes from Maria and she was just wondering if you could quickly demonstrate how to add colour codes in. So if you do have the code, do you know how to copy and paste that for the colour to show up in Canva? If you have a color code so let's say i'm just gonna just copy this code here so if you have a color code and you have it copy and pasted you can actually so if you select the element you want and you click into this color box up here and if you click onto this plus icon which says add a new color you actually get an option to paste your color code here so for example, if we wanted, I'm just gonna do black. If we type that in, it will change that to black. There you go, it's as easy as that. Hopefully that helps you, Maria. So our next question is, how much space should you give when you're designing? Like from the top to bottom, like is there any, grids or anything within Canva that can help you when you're designing? So if you actually click onto file up here in the editor and we have these options here to show rulers and guidelines which will give you these numbers here and you can actually drag these lines down through the design so if you want to line something up with another element, you can actually use this as a guide. So you can drag that down or even from the side here. And that will just help you line things up or create your own margins. But if you don't have your own margins and sides that you want to use, there's also an option here, which if you click on it, it shows you the margins. I'm just going to delete these lines here so you can see. You can actually see there's like these dotted lines on the side, which gives enough space on the edges so that it's not too far out. So if you, for example, grab onto an element and drag it, you can also snap it to that margin line. And it's just easier for you to see. And there's also one on top and bottom as well. That's how you can make sure that there's enough breathing space around your design. Perfect. Well, I think one more and then we might have to go, guys. But we've had quite a few questions about font and how to choose fonts that work well with your designs. Do you have any advice or things that people should keep in mind? Well, it sort of depends on the tone of your design and what you're sort of designing. So... For example, if it's something more serious, you might want more of a, like maybe a sans serif font, but you can always just play around with whatever you want and change it as you go. Because like I said before, nothing's like set in stone, but if you need a hand, there's also these tabs up here, which sort of give a description of what you might want. So there's headings, and different typefaces for paragraphs and so on. So you might want like an elegant sort of style or a vintage style. So it sort of depends on what you're designing, but also if you go into styles here, there's a bunch of sort of 
styles that have already been pre-created for you by Canva. So there's font pairings that have already been done for you and color palettes, but you can also customize it depending on sort of your brand itself. So you have just a bunch of options that have already been chosen for you and you know that these two fonts will work together because we've chosen them for you as a sort of kit. Cool. Well, I think that wraps up our show for today. Just before you go, I do have a couple resources that might help everyone. The first one is our Canva Design Circle Facebook group. So if you haven't signed up to that yet, I would definitely recommend it. It has over 200,000 members now, so it's quite large and it's a great place to ask questions hear about new future rollouts, get tips and tricks on your designs, as well as feedback, which I think is great. Our next resource is the link where you can submit your designs for our next design makeover. So you can get your phone out and scan the QR code on the screen now. Well, Thank you everyone for attending our design makeover today. I hope you learned something. And we can't wait to see you for future episodes with the Canva Live team. Thank you, everyone. Bye.